You're now tuned into me, 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 million dollars worth of game. First of all, mm. we're in Detroit, mm. surrounded by a bunch of Detroit players. Mm. We got one of the biggest Detroit players. Mm. You know what I mean? I don't know what y'all know him by. You know, mm. there's a couple different, you know, babies out here, but this is Babyface Ray, baby. Yeah. Who? Babyface Ray. Yeah. All right, that's who you know. I know motherfucking Marcellus, nigga. Oh. Marcellus, nigga from the east side. No, yeah. Mama? Yeah, motherfucking six mile. Yeah, me want the motherfucking Brenda Scott. Oh, oh okay. You know something. Was a basketball star and a hell of a drummer. Yeah, me come through. Yeah, boys, did y'all research? Did y'all? Yeah, man, you know I know some niggas but that know some niggas. What's his game at? Yeah, they said he was a star. I used to hoop before I rap. I thought I was going to really make it to the league. See, yeah. you know what? You two niggas got something in common. Yeah. You two, what, did, did you get any? Did you get any letters? No, I. By the time I got to high school, it was over with. Yeah, was, this was this was middle school. This was at Brenda yeah. Scott. They said the nigga was even, putting in buckets no, though. I was, yeah, I was like that for sure. They said that nigga was a more fucking. By the time I made the high school, it was over with. He was that. But nigga. They also said that you know they said he was the only nigga right. He'd give you twenty at the half, and then he don't go in at, at the motherfucking halftime <laughs> with the rest of the team. <laughs> what? He, he lead the band during the halftime. Nigga, boom, 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 boom. No, nah, for sure. You know, that nigga was serious. And then come back the next half and I give you another the band 20. Yeah, so when the band will be there, I can have my band shit on. And well, let me ask you a question, though. How much did that inspire the music shit? The band? Yeah. It inspired it a lot, for sure. For sure. See, I ain't play the drums, though. I played the trumpet. Yeah. Pull it like Miles Davis, you know what I'm saying? My granddad used to always listen to jazz and shit, so once the opportunity came, I'm like, let me fuck with the trumpet because I always see him listening to niggas playing the trumpet, so yeah. that's how that came about. That's what's up. That's man. where the smooth shit came from, Granddaddy, just being smooth and laid back? I don't know what the smooth. Who was the smoothest nigga in the family before you, man? Because I met your brothers. They ain't as smooth as you. <laughs> no. I fuck with them, but they ain't as smooth as you. My pops is smooth nigga like that. Rotten ass nigga. We at? <laughs> Beat me out my fucking money, rotten ass nigga. Nigga shot your lights out, but that's another story. <laughs> Niggas yeah. look bad, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> no, my pops was a smooth nigga like that, though. Yeah. Same way, carry yourself like that. Like He really ain't tripping about too much. Right. Your whole approach is just laid back. What I like about your shit is like, you walk a motherfucker through it. You narrating it. You talking. You talking to a motherfucker. You laying the game down for him. You just laying the pieces down for a motherfucker so they can soak it up and get everything. They ain't, they not missing nothing. Like when you wrote your first shit, like who inspired you to write your first rap? Like who was the motherfucker you was listening to? Like yo, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go write some shit. Man, I used to be listening to a lot of shit. Like my brother used to rap, not the one that shot your lights out. I'm. I really got. Four brothers, I'm the youngest mm -hmm. all in. So you my just other brother used to rap. Like that. Nah, yeah, he, he shot, shot your lights out, nigga. You made us look bad in Detroit, man. Your man got it on camera too, but <laughs> shit, whoever was good at the time inspired me to rap. I feel like every nigga tried to be a rapper in their life. Mm -hmm. You tried to be a rapper. No, once. no, I was a rapper. Was I was actually okay. a big ass rapper. I was a rapper and a manager. Okay, so I managed him. Rapper. Every nigga tried it, so you know, I just yeah. you know when I tried, I just stuck with it type shit. You know. And uh, you 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 didn't stop, man. You was over there in the crib. You just was going in. No, I used to stop, start, stop, start, and then. And, just and, finally worked out for me. And what was the last moment where you said, you know what? I'm sticking to this shit. I'm going. I'm going. I ain't, I ain't deviating. Man, all type of big people in the industry or just, you know, execs and labels was calling and they just fuck with my music. That's when I knew, like, man, this shit real. You know what I'm saying? Gazi had been already gave me an opportunity. I used to be begging niggas because Peasy you know, all, all them boys was on Empire first. You know what I'm saying? I seen the bad guys he was dropping off. But I wouldn't get no bad. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, man, just introduce me. To the nigga, y'all introduced me to him. I'm under the rest. So. Nobody never did, and I end up. Uh, I was kicking it with um, Yo Gotti one time. We was kicking it, and when I left from kicking it with him, Gazi just wrote me out the blue, like, "What's up? Fly to San Francisco. I flew Dolo, and shit. That's how that happened." Now, now, what, what, what was it? The moment, like, when, when you knew, like, damn, this song right here is gonna go. What was it? What song that you knew, like? This is this is that shit. This is this is the one. Man, I don't never had them moments. I just be having the music, then I put it put it out, and then it work out like that. All right. Now a lot of times when we in the ghetto, a lot of motherfuckers never get exposed to new a lot of new shit. Yeah. You did a song years back by like 2015, Miami in November. Damn, how you know about that? And and it was special. I do my research. Yeah. It was special because they said the Detroit players, you know, everybody would go to Miami in November. Like a yeah. bunch of y'all shoot out there. And just escape from, you know, this. Why was the moments outside of the song so important to the to the two and the home you and the homies from Detroit to get out of here and just go to Miami? Why was that important? Man, that shit really started out as my cousin's birthday, and then mm -hmm. 
you know, me being a rapper that's around, they, they don't need, they not even knowing I'm taking rap serious because I ain't doing it around there. These niggas getting money for real, man. You know, they having everything the rappers having. So it's like, I damn near don't really even want to rap around them niggas. I'm doing it on the low. I'm, I'm leaving the situation and going to rap about the shit. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm down there with them boys. Um, now it's a full fucking holiday. You know what I'm saying? Like, they calling right now trying to figure out why we ain't going down there. We've been doing this for how many years? 2015. All the way up to now. Seven years strong. We go down there, escape this shit. You know what I'm saying? Get some cars, fuck around, just, you know, live it up. Save a lot of lives. I see that you do something right. You do something, I say this shit is a little irregular because, I, you know, I, I study the game. And, like, Gil. Hold on for a second. Nate. Before we go any further. Go ahead. Keep your thoughts. Um, let me give a shout out to our sponsor, New Amsterdam Vodka. Yes. Now, um, this episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by New Amsterdam Vodka. Now, today, we going to do a little something different. New Amsterdam Vodka is introducing Wild Card. You hear me? Look at that. Eight ounce can, the first canned beverage that New Amsterdam Vodka has ever distributed. It's right here, wild card, and it's made with real vodka. We're not playing no games, okay? There's not no artificial shit going on. No, this is made with real vodka, and it come in three flavors. Original hard lemonade, classic hard punch, and this right here, lemon hard tea. Yeah, look at it. Eight ounces. Look at it. Real vodka. Look at it. Wild card. When you out and about, wherever you at at your local liquor store or wherever they sell New Amsterdam vodka, make sure you pick you up some. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. Try all three flavors. Give all three flavors a try. Figure out which one you like the best. This right here is the lemon hard tea. I think I'm about to crack this open and see what it's about. All right. Now go ahead and get back to what Now you, you do saying. some irregular shit. Yeah. Gil will tell you, I'm one of them dudes with though. It ain't too much that goes on in music or whatever's going on that I don't know about. And I come in with conversations. And when I say you do something irregular is that I see a lot of times you be throwing up, like up and coming dudes from Detroit on your page. You be throwing them on your store. You be doing that shit a lot. Yeah. What, what keeps you grounded, man? Shit. If I'm throwing somebody shit on my page, it ain't no... Nothing coming from it. Like, I'm probably really listening to it. Yeah. And I know how much me posting it can mean to them. Mm -hmm. And the right person see it is on. So if I do that and can help them shit, why not? It's enough money out here. Absolutely. And so I, why not? You know what I'm saying? And, I don't and, look at nothing wrong. And at this point in time, like, you you young. You still young, but you, you like a young OG in, in, in Detroit as far as the music scene. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you coming up and... and Niggas from Detroit watching you come up. There's niggas out here to look up to you. So you, you dropping a blessing like that on somebody, man, that shit could change somebody's whole situation around because it's all about energy. You never know what a motherfucker going through. Then you post this shit up. He just might have been ready to stop like you were stopping. No, stop and sure. starting, stop and starting. Then you post that nigga shit up. He like, oh, man. It mean the same to him that it meant to you when all the record labels was calling. No, for sure. Sure. That's a big moment in his life. Man, Babyface Ray posted me up, man. It, you feel what I'm saying? And, there, and perception is reality. No. Babyface Ray posted you up. You hot, nigga. Nah, nigga feeling good now. Nah. Sure. Nigga, you hot. Who the fuck is raggedy ass boo-boo to say something that Babyface Ray posted you? No, nah, nah, no, cap. I don't want to hear what the fuck you got to say, nigga. Nigga that's in the game eating. I'm probably what? just really riding to the shit, though. Like, damn, this shit hard posted. Like, right. This is what y'all niggas need to be listening to. But beyond me posting the music, like, we didn't, not me, I mean, not we, but me, I didn't, you know what I'm saying, I had niggas around me that went and rapping and then started, and now they got shit going on, they own motion, you know what I'm saying? Like, since I got to Gazi, uh, shit, two of my homeboys back there, they don't, they fuck with Empire now, you know what I'm saying? Gazi just grabbed another one of my homeboys. I engineered his first song, my nephew on Empire. They didn't even know he was my nephew. He just around and, you know what I'm saying, doing his thing. So beyond me posting any shit, we didn't, We got five, six people that have emotion just off of just, you know what I'm saying, seeing me going through the ups and downs and recording. We just got an engineer probably seven, eight months ago. We used to record ourselves. Like, though you used to record yourself all the way up to seven, eight months ago? No, no cap, for real. All them CDs and all that shit y'all heard, I was recording myself. No cap. 
God damn. Do you record on the road? Like, you take your shit? Like, if you on tour, you go in a hotel Hell yeah. room and Hell yeah. get busy? Hell yeah. That's how we rocking. I'd rather do that than do anything else. I ain't trying to go party. I ain't trying to go club. I'd rather record. And we'll just, shit, we'll do what we do right there. You feel me? Yeah. What we in the club for? What we you selling? bring the club to you. Oh, my, man, I'm trying to tell you. For real. We still reaching higher and higher. Like, we ain't about to stop, slow down, and celebrate. Because... I'm I'm looking good to others, but sometimes I look out and see somebody they doing their things like man. Let me get to that point, and then when I get to that point, I'm gonna use somebody else's motivation. <coughs> right to keep elevating. No, for sure. Yeah, absolutely, man. I was just wondering before before we go any further. I want to shout out what's that shit called? The MGM yeah. in, De- in Detroit. What's yeah, that man. I went to that shit, man. That shit MGM was club casino. Lift, man. That shit lovely. That motherfucker was. You gotta stay out of there though. They gonna trim you. No, nah, yeah, they, they they got me that night. I got the fuck out of there. <laughs> Don't go I back. got out of there. Soon Don't as go I back seen niggas. Niggas arguing at the dice game. I'm at the dice. I'm like, you niggas is at a casino. You How in the Detroit, fuck man? Are y'all arguing at the dice table. Man, you in Detroit? Oh yeah, but it would. You could tell Detroit is really like me being at that if, in there. You could tell Detroit like really a player fucking town. Like, no, for sure. Niggas was having a. Uh, I don't even know what to call it, but niggas was having a motherfucking. Dress off in that motherfucker. No, them niggas, them niggas yeah. was in that motherfucker. Like, nigga ain't about to go to MGM without no shit on. They like, putting that shit on. I've never seen this many eight thousand dollar outfits in my fucking <laughs> life. What the fuck's going on in no, real. It ain't a fucking. It ain't a store in Detroit that got some designer shit in that motherfucker. They all sold out every fucking way. But it let me know. It said, "Damn, they ain't." They be on some gangster shit, but this really a player town. No, for man. sure, yeah. for sure. That's the biggest misconception about Detroit. They think this bitch like come here die. Like hell no. Oh, Detroit no. guys, they trying to get some money first. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like everybody trying to get some money. Like you know what you know what I find really made time. Remember, I was having a conversation with Gil. Detroit, one of the only cities that by the time you hear about a rapper, about when the rapper coming out, they already got their fucking kit from the rip. The cameraman got a kid. The engineer got a kid. It's like, who don't got a fucking kid out here? As soon as you see a motherfucker, they got their chain, they got their watch, they got their whole situation going. I'm talking about the, they, they got motion. You got to know the dope boys raising all, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They already seeing this shit before, you know what I'm saying? So they know what to go do when they finally do get a couple dollars. They know what it takes. They seeing the other rappers. I mean, I got to get my kid up, you know what I'm saying? They going to get that before anything. Cause yeah. They feel like you need it. And I was a nigga who act, felt like I ain't even need no jury to my PZ talking me like, man, you got ice up, just show them elevation. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Show them you growing, growing a little bit. So, yeah. How do it feel to be that? It's like the other side of Detroit is now finally getting shine, the street side. You know what I mean? That, that, that street music. You know what I mean? How do it feel? Because now y'all, y'all out here. Y'all in their face heavy. Well, ask me. I'm in the moment right now, so I don't really know. You feel me? I, but it's crazy because... Everybody really having their way right now. You know having their way. Like, for real. Because it ain't used to be like that. We down there thought nobody wouldn't even fucking with our sound. And now it's like so many people, you know, doing their thing. And that shit crazy, like how it all changed around. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a bunch of y'all doing. And y'all got, y'all got like a bunch of people coming off the bench. Not saying it in a bad way. Like, uh-huh. that's, that's coming into the game. I, I came off the bench. So that's I know exactly what game. you mean. You know I was a nigga at the end of the bench watching everybody do their thing. So I know exactly what you mean, for sure. But... Honestly, man, it just be it, it just really be about timing, man. Hundred percent. You know what I mean? It wasn't that you was at the end of the bench. It's just that you. Was I knew a, that too, though. You was a rookie. No, for sure. You know what I mean? You just got to the league, so you got to go through your bumps, your bruises. You gotta, you gotta learn how to eat. You gotta, you know what I'm saying? You gotta work. You gotta know how to, how to condition your body. Or you were just going through the ropes to get to where you at now. You know what I'm saying? I'm real observant, so I just watch niggas and just learn the do's and. The do's and don'ts Like Okay I'm not doing that I'm gonna do that I'm not doing that And then when I feel like I got my formula together I just start You know Doing my thing Type shit Do you ever feel that, Do You being so humble Like how How hard is it to be To know you the shit But to be that humble Man because rap Is An aggressive Sport Yeah It's a nigga I'm that nigga Nigga, fuck y'all. You gotta be about. somewhat entertaining, and for me not to be, I am. It be like they always be telling me to turn up, pop my shit. But it's like, man, I remember when niggas used to come through and, and they had that bag. You know how them animated niggas be with the money and just loud mouthing. I never liked it that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because when you do that and you down there fall off and niggas be looking at you, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. 
I don't never want to be that. Like, I just want to do my thing if I'm doing my thing. And if it ever gets to a point where I ain't, you know what I'm saying, it's going to be the same me. I'm going to just stay the same. You know what I'm saying? I ain't about to get big on a nigga because I'm having my way right now. Hell no, I ain't that type. Okay, I like that. You know, rap is a rap is a sport where you poke your chest out. You know what I'm saying? Oh, no, for like, sure. Yeah, nigga. I'm, I'm here, nigga. I mean, I'll n- niggas know who know me. They know. I really, I feel like sometimes I only got to do that shit because it's like, Niggas know. I, I feel like I ain't that. never seen you do it. You know, I feel like you just be like, you be nigga, I'm me, Sometimes nigga. I pop my shit, though, but it's yeah. like, I don't know cameras on. I just yeah. get to pop my shit for sure. You just got to be around me. Yeah. I'm going to start coming to Detroit, hang with this nigga. No, for I sure. I want to pop his shit, man. <laughs> me he popping gonna, my shit is you walking in my house now or something. You know what I'm saying? The kids running around, and that's me popping my shit. That's how I'm popping it for real. You, you know what's crazy? A lot of times when I FaceTime, you were kicked it with you. You was being a daddy, man. Oh no! I see that's real important to you. You you stay kid up. How you know? How, just, just how was fatherhood for you, man? My dad was in my life. My mom and my dad still together right now. So, and we ain't really you know they they make sure I had everything I needed for real. You know what I'm saying? Like we ate, they kept me clean and shit. And I was the youngest, so by the time I got older and wanted to do something, all my brothers was out the house, you know what I'm saying? So I kind of, I got intrigued by getting in the streets from just watching my brother do shit or something, you know what I'm saying? I didn't have to do that. They actually got the money from the church for me to go to college, and I stopped going, you know what I'm saying? So it was, parent, it was definitely, my my dad and my life definitely meant something, you know what I'm saying? And then it's like my kids, they look at me like a superhero, so it's like, I got to be there, you know what I'm saying? Like the they think I'm the, coo- in the world. They think I'm the coolest nigga in the, You know what I'm saying So That's it's good. like man I gotta you know. Ain't that the greatest feeling in the world Man that shit I can't let what? them down before anybody oh, Man it gotta be the greatest feeling in the world When your kids don't Gotta go outside their household For a role model man Oh for sure Cause they look up to their fucking daddy that much Like no My my pop always been my role model I don't I don't really gotta look up to other niggas Even though they be tearing me up <laughs> Now they think uh your daddy pockets is the thing now, so. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, they is, If I ain't hit my pockets, they down there mad at me. Like, Let daddy, y'all know something. you. Come on, you bullshit. Because they on a world tour right now. You know what I mean? They tore your fucking pockets apart in your fucking bank account. That's what they going to yeah. do. That's what they here for. You know what I mean? They like, that. we didn't ask for you to shoot us out. No, for real. But we like that. You be having on nice clothes, daddy, and we like this Prada jacket, too, and we... And, and I like them Balenciaga boots. <laughs> no, no cap. Screenshot that shit They fucked up when they me. start making that oh, shit. Oh, yeah, they send screenshots. Man. They send screenshots. They sending me screenshots with the jacket, with the shoes, the, the matching pants. The they know fit. how to do all type of shit. And I'll be like, that's crazy. Motherfucking kids got $3,500 outfits. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, they, 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 no they ain't playing. They ain't playing. Real. I'm glad my kids grown. When you, when you say they sent you to college, what was you majoring in? Man, I don't even know. I just was going because my pops told me, like, man, listen that's here. That's crazy. You either going... Get a job or you gonna go to college. You know what I'm saying? It's easy. Or like get out. When, when this shit. No, like when Cuz went, what was so good about his? He had a he had a janitorial <laughs> sports college. <laughs> like he was a janitor in, in in college. Yeah. The college he basically got his. Fuck you, be yeah, he right? Was doing, <laughs> like no, he was doing the shit. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, that serious he was doing like, that playing up. basketball on the side, so they gave him a split scholarship. Like it was for okay academic. I mean for sports, you know, and hold janitorial. On, he on. had the keys. All you the went to college. Yeah, he went to college. Hold on for one second. Hold on for one. Why the fuck is all y'all over there laughing? Oh, the nigga went to college. He went to a bum ass college. <laughs> like I was really a janitor on a scholarship. <laughs> he had a walk on scholarship. He just walked the fuck to the walk to the college. Walk into the college. He needed a janitor and he needed a ball player. So he just on scholarship. On yeah, he just walked right in on a janitorial. <laughs> no, he was majoring. Jan- and Ray said to him, "Yeah, yeah, he could see, he could see it. <laughs> Motherfucker, see it in you." No, man. now now his brother beat me on a fucking slanted court. And now y'all putting smut on no, my you, basketball you, game. Huh? You know you been yeah. fucking niggas up, so it's like you come in here, we shoot, you, shoot you out. Then the devil. nigga was weak, Dorby. I walk in yeah, the brother like right this. Up. This was a lineup. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Damian Gillard? Oh, yeah. Hey, nigga, my name Gilly, nigga. Yeah, he was waiting. Like, he <laughs> the nigga said to court right out there. He, he lined you right up. <laughs> lied, you. lied me the fuck up. Oh, didn't slice he? your pockets. This episode of Million Hours Worth of Game is brought to you by Roman. Oh, now, do you want to have a better sex life? Better. If so, you're not alone. Up to 50% of men have symptoms that get in the way of wanting or enjoying sex, but Roman is here to help. help Roman is the digital health 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 clinic for men. Roman addresses 
a variety of sexual health needs for men. Roman offers genuine medication that helps achieve and maintain a strong erection. <sighs> Helped him. Right. You know what I mean? Hmm. Roman offers discreet wipes that help you last four times longer in bed. Roman offers the testosterone test, which includes lab processing, and it's appropriate for you. Treatment for low testosterone. And men with low T, getting testosterone levels back to normal can help you increase your libido. At Roman, there are no waiting rooms, no hassle. It's just straightforward digital experience from comfort of your home. Medication or testing is appropriate. Roman will send it directly to your door. Everything arrives in a discreet packaging. Free two-day shipping. To learn more about this, go to row.co slash game to get 20% off. That's row.co slash game. You see it on the screen. And it's just like that. Right. Now, I see that uh, a lot of people don't understand when you see somebody like, you know, and I told somebody this before, you, you see somebody like Babyface Ray on Empire, but you was moving like you was major. And I was telling a couple dudes, yo, teamwork, make the dream work. I see on your team, you got Braille Line, you, you know, a woman. You got a lawyer woman. Uh, you book an agent, a woman. What's that about, bro? I see these women ain't playing for you. It, it wasn't playing like that. It just, you know, it just happened. Like, I met Braille Line, and then it was like a domino effect, just meeting with women that was handling business. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So ain't no discrimination. If you handling business, come on. Yeah, but, but it worked better like that too, though. I ain't gonna why? lie. Why? Why do I feel better? like I feel like women, not saying men don't, but I feel like women just you know got a certain drive. No, they got. See, when a woman get in the business with you, then and she like you as a person. Yeah. Then it gets emotional. So now it's like, nah, no. The fuck you mean no? No, for real. You you can't do that. Uh, they'd be on a motherfucking line every day, all week. No, no, nigga, you said no, but that was Tuesday, nigga. It's Wednesday. See, so a woman going to push and push and push and push where a nigga ego will come into play, man. Fuck that. No, oh, for real. Leave, ass, the, leave, the, money, nigga, leave the money all on the table. Bitch ass nigga, play him a bust him in his fucking head. Yo, yeah. oh, bro. Oh. Turn to some street shit like this. Especially if you got a street, you know, dudes from the set. Motherfucker yeah. get crazy. But you know and what the I'm professionalism saying? go out quick when that ego hit. So a woman, her approach is never of the aggressiveness. Is always of the, we just need to get business done. Relax. Even when you like, that bitch ass nigga said, no, relax. I got him. I'm, I'm working on him. No, nah, she really be the one on 10, though. I be yeah, but that's the, behind be... closed scenes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. You know what I mean? That's behind the closed doors. When she get on the phone, she back to, hey, how are you? Man, I'm trying to get this done this week. I know she didn't cuss us out a couple fucking times. No, nah, she ain't cuss y'all out. <laughs> she know I ain't going for that shit. But the whole twist is like... <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm ten toes. You know what I mean? She know what? What? I had to check in the den one time. Yo, then I call you three, four times. Like, what's going on? Like, no, while I was busy. All right, yeah, I'm trying to get Ray, man. Stop playing. But listen, the whole the whole thing is like this. Why though. you putting your pinky out like that? Because that's when talking. I go into mode. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean, around some Detroit players. I'm filling up your players. So shit, you know, a bunch of players shit going on. Yeah. So I and I just had to establish that. That let them know this nigga ain't playing. The pinky he out. He raised that motherfucker up. Yeah. I mean, because I'm thinking I got the ice on them. I'm thinking it's back in the day. Yeah. You know what I mean? That that cheap ass ring you had, we stole from a nigga. <laughs> no, that was that a was, fucking school ring with some onyx in it. That was dog, nigga. Get the fuck out of here. You was dying to wear that shit. <laughs> nigga, take that smut off my name, man. I had ice in my shit, man. I had an ice cube. Yeah, one shit, man. stone in that motherfucker. That bitch was green. That's what the fuck did. type of stone? You lying on me, nigga. You take that smut off my name, man. We come on, man. You trying to fuck my, my, my ahead, man. But listen, though, you, you know it's just like that team is very important. I see a lot of people get in the game and everybody think, I got the kit, I can rap. I'm that nigga. It's going to go. No. You need a booking agent. You need a good lawyer. You need a mouthpiece. You need somebody that's going to go in the rooms and represent people to where's though. Them nose, when you throwing them nose around, it can't come from you. It got to come from that person. They got to be the dickhead. You can't be the dickhead. You see what I'm saying? Like anything we do, everybody know Gil's the dickhead. Yeah. You know what I mean? But when it comes to business, I'm mm -hmm. the dickhead. I'm the, you know, I'm his lawyer, his manager, all that shit. I, I control his money. All his money come to my account first. <laughs> And I, you know, then I slice it down. But that's another story. But like, teamwork make the dream work. And a lot of times, I think it's very important that artists understand don't this. Let him run on you, huh? You don't need. What, what's going on? That nigga get... full of shit, man. What? My money go to his account. What the fuck? No, you know when I be giving you them cashier checks and shit, that that hit me. That's the company. That's like that's a. It's cool, man. You don't understand about the whole company I got in the cut. <laughs> All right. But what I'm saying is that that it's very important that we talking about this because a lot of artists, everybody think. Oh, 
I got the jury on. I got my drip together. I shot a video. I paid this motherfucking artist 100000 something to be in the video. That don't mean you're going to go. I swear. Like, who is the team that's going to put the marketing, the rollout, get them billboards, Spotify? Who, who, who going to do that? A lot of people missing that, too. They don't even understand what be going on behind the scenes of doing the music, shooting a video, and then the time that go into it after that. Like, niggas don't even be knowing what be going on. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. There's a lot of relationships in this game. For how, sure. How, for how, sure. how has relationships really helped you? Man, great. Great. Sometimes they be doing shit for me. It's just based off me being a good person to them. You know what I'm saying? Like, flat out. So, you got to have them good relationship. You can't be no diva. I be running into niggas, niggas be divas for real, you know what I'm saying? So, Like rap niggas? It be truly yeah. disappointing, yeah. don't it? Yeah. Because it be dudes you probably Like, give me the yellow Skittles in my, you know what I'm saying? Like, on some shit like that. Damn. Like, yeah. We ain't on that. Yeah. I mean, because cause we, we had a few concerts in the motherfucking, uh, the motherfucking uh, Philly and, uh, some of the shit them niggas was asking for on the rider. They was asking for everything but a, for a fucking naked Mexican chick, man. The motherfuckers wanted everything. Mike and Nikes, only the rainbow killer. No, the for fuck, real. Nigga? Now, I leaders, told Barry, I'm about to start banana. doing it. Like, man, let me start Street answering. Rappers. The fuck's going on, man? 16 iPhone charges. Man, get the fuck out of here. I'm no not cap. doing that shit. Like, that fucking rider was ridiculous. It was another 8,000. I'm like, what the fuck's going on? That's how niggas is riding. Because <laughs> a rider for us back in the day was some fucking Hennessy and some chicken, man. Oh, you had a little nose candy on there, too. Get the fuck oh. out of here. That was part of that shit. Don't fuck a lot of them young boys. You had that candy on there. You kept some candy on there. Yeah, you always kept a candy. You hear me? It was some motherfucking Hennessy, some motherfucking ball, fried chicken, eight ball. some Cokes, some Pepsis. You heard yeah. me saying some Coke? Man. Yes, you had an eight ball on there. I know you kept an eight ball when I was in jail. Hey, we so lost in the sauce, though. Like, we don't, we not even knowing about when niggas had concerts, we get to have a writer. So one time a rapper invited me and Peasy to a show. Mm -hmm. And we walk backstage, we doing whatever we think rappers supposed to do, and we bust her right in the room. A nigga got a whole pan of food in there. So, you know, we like, shit, there's some food in here. We get to go in at the what's the name. So when a rapper come out, he like, damn, that the security like, who ate the who ate the food? We not knowing. We thinking it's just food. You know what I'm saying? This a nigga writer. Like, yeah. This a nigga what he asked for specifically. Right. And we ain't know. Like, that's the first time I learned. Like, oh, damn, you can ask for all type of shit. Who food was it? Y'all fuck No, with? I ain't saying. No, I fuck with him, but it's like, damn. Yeah. I mean, he already ate his food. And that was uh, Fetty Wap. The Fetty came that out. Was the first, that was the first industry nigga that played my shit on Instagram, man. You know what I'm saying? Fetty Wap was? Hell yeah. Shout out to Fetty Wap. Shout out to Fetty's jersey. I thought it was building, on. Man. Like, damn, man. It's yeah, on. to see how you, the same way he I made you I feel, that's on. how you made a nigga feel. You know I what I mean? Thought when next you day, a nigga's gonna show up to my house with one of them big ass uh, <laughs> checks. Publicity like, clearing house. Come on out, man. For real. I, th I think I think it's important of it added value to you though. No, for sure. Yeah. Like a lot of times, like we be talking about the music business. I just think it's important that you get somebody. A lot of these young cats. It's not about somebody having money. A motherfucker could be no money, but they can have relationships and they can understand infrastructure. Like understand that's a manager job to understand the writer, to understand your e emails and booking your joint, to understand you get you get you know deposit the lock in the date, travel costs and all all that shit that you know that like you said the writer and all that. That's what all that, you know, the a good team come into place with. That was yeah. back in the day, low. Fuck you mean? It's still back in the day. I'm a manager by heart. Fuck are you so talking about? I know the game. I got a superb now. team, too. To I these young niggas, you manager now. Oh, yeah, yeah. He got oh, that nigga pay for your studio time. He pay your bitches rent. No, that's a daddy. That's, nigga. He yeah, buy yeah, you something yeah, yeah. to close no. the weird to the show. He put the rollie on oh, your fuck fucking that's arm. The, up. That's the starter kit manager. You know what I'm oh, saying? When that's the boy that's going to get left. Yeah, they find he's the getting dipped on. No, when they find the raw talent and then they, then they got to take care of him all, all the way up into it. Like, for sure. That's the starter yeah, he kit. he always get burnt Because, though. come on, man. How many niggas we know, man, in the game, man, that, that, oh, yeah, yeah. that, that manage niggas, man? Yeah, I know a lot of niggas. These niggas is three, four million dollars in the hole, man. I know a nigga one that had 1.4 himself. From he to manage a bunch of niggas just throwing money at it. Hold on, he in the hole managing somebody? Yeah, no, he's in the hole for managing multiple niggas. Damn. 1.4. He done went he done went from this dude to this dude. Cause these dudes don't be doing paperwork sometimes. Cause the, the new artist no, I ain't signing no paperwork. They playing games. They get all these stuff. Why they ain't signing the paper though? I don't know. It's a lot of everybody don't know the paperwork, make the paperwork. Everybody ain't on that game. Like when I signed Gil to his joint. Every think it's some crazy when shit. When I signed Gil to his first man in his joint, I said, cuz, sign this. That's what's his name. He didn't know that the pr promo shows I had him doing, <laughs> I was getting paid for them joints. He is lying. I had that nigga man. doing block parties, but I had that nigga doing everything. Bars, all that type of shit. 
But what I'm saying is this. Your team, Babyface Ray is where you need to be at because he had a good team. You put the work in, you went to the studio, you had a good team. <laughs> Listen, this new album, man. Who you got on there, man? I got um I got Dirk on there. Mm. I got Blast on there. Mm. Shout out to Blast Dirk. I got um then after that it's just cats from the I got GMO Stacks on there, young mm. cat coming up. I got King Hendricks, y'all know who that is, Samuel Shabazz. These just some guys on, you know what I'm saying? And I think that's it, ain't it? Then I just got a bunch of skits from, you know, my people. My mama on there. Just yeah, I heard shit. on it. She was she was you was asking some questions. That's oh, cool, sure. man. Yeah. Your that, mama made a debut, huh? Yeah. Cause my pops was did a prayer on the last CD, so mm-hmm. she like, damn, you ain't gonna. I'm like, come well, on, she man. stepped to you about this shit. She put that yeah. nigga on front like, street. Like, damn, she in the crib. You go over there and get some chicken. No, she my said, mama, come my, here, baby. my mama down there like, hey, what's up? Like, you ain't gonna. She down there want to be in the interview right now. You know what I'm saying? Why you ain't calling? Tell her, come uh, on. No, because no. I'll tell you how this works. They heard the album. She called him in one day. Marcellus, come on in here, baby. <laughs> did you eat? You, you ain't. You full. You know I carried you for nine months, right? No, nah, for real. Mm-hmm. Damn. You're like, man, where you going at with this shit? And you put Big Ray on the fucking album. Hmm? Put BR on there? You put BR on there instead of Mama. And Pop Touch, Pop's cool as hell, too, so. A, he had to, to negotiate right there. Mama, the next album. <laughs> you, nah, you for real. Got you, mama. <laughs> mama wasn't going for that shit. Shit, mom like my mom. Yeah, but that's yeah, some shit you. my mom would have did. She happy this shit going on, though, so. That's what's up. Sure. Because I know they wasn't happy when you decided to, to not take the church's money and go to college. Oh, damn. <laughs> was, my, pops, you, fucking with you. my pops was a reverend too, so it was oh, like. Oh, Lord. He wasn't He like, bro, you though. took the church money and didn't go to college. Like, what you want? And that was conversation like, well, was deep, huh? I disappeared. It was, I was gone. And they said, Marcellus. <laughs> you took the church money. What's they, this white shit? I mean, they call me Ray. They don't call me that. Don't nobody call me that. Yeah. Don't nobody call you that. They call me Ray. They call you Ray. Yeah. How how, you, how how did you come with Ray from Marcel? That's my middle name. Oh, that's your middle name. Oh, okay. Damn, he, he took the church's money and blew the fuck up. Damn, I hope the church people ain't watching this shit. <laughs> no, we just fucking. Said, damn, he's fucking. <laughs> but let me tell you something. That was the life that your parents had set for you. You know? Because the reality is all these motherfucking kids is going to college. They, they getting all these loans. They graduating. And then they pay, going to work regular back. fucking jobs. I swear. I don't understand it. Making $40,000, $50,000, and niggas is in the hole. And got to pay the money back so that like you was in college for. All this shit. Buck 50. And so, you know, you was like, I, and it worked in your favor. It's not like they looking up now and they like, you bum ass nigga, we told you to go to college. The honest to God truth is my first day on the college campus when I walked in to, uh, Find my class The first thing I seen Was GT and GT he had, wasn't it Yeah he had a weed sack He was trying to roll And it was just over with We like man Just go to the car <laughs> Fuck we ain't even going to class We treated it like high school You and GT dipped Man for real Jumped in the GT And got out of there Smoked some Detroit boogie back there He had a little car We got and shit Was over with now, you, Nigga never won back Nope <laughs> Now you know He didn't even go to see What the school was like None of that shit No we ain't even sit In the classroom Like it was over with. This shit was over with. This episode of the Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by Owens Mixers. Just add Owens to kick up your pregame and night with a better tasting cocktail. Owens Mixer is the easiest way to make high quality bar style cocktails that will get you right back to the party. Vodka, tequila, or gin over ice and just add Owens. That's all you got to do is add Owens. Owens makes it pair perfectly. I'm talking about this right here appears perfectly to create the best American Mule, vodka, cranberry, margarita, transfusion, and more. Visit OwensMixer.com for more cocktails and where to buy nationwide, including clubs, restaurants, and arenas. Just add Owens Mixer to create great party cocktails. Easy to make, easy to buy. Go to OwensMixer.com. Amazon, a GoPuff, Owens Mixer. Listen, listen, get the party started with Owens Mixer, and it's just like that. Welcome to another episode of the Million Dollars Worth of Game Business Spotlight, where we give you the news you can use, and we help you get off the couch. You know, today we got Mr. Credit Yourself, himself, you dig what I'm saying? 
Big no, Bobby, Mr. Man. Credit Yourself. No, it's, no, it's Mr. Credit <laughs> Yourself. I said it's himself. Oh, okay. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? Big Bobby, man, straight from Alabama, man. He giving it up. I mean, what you need to do from the rip, because he's going to give you a free course on this credit game. He, you know, we always have people here to just try to give you information that can help you get to another department of life. Uh, what you need to do, you need to text Leverage to 334-508-4501. 334-508-4501. He's going to give you a free course and help you get to the next levels of life. Bobby, tell me what you got going on, Bobby. What's up, everybody? So, man, I appreciate you guys for having me on and everything mm-hmm. like that. So, I'm going to tell you all how I got started, right? So, I got started in 2017. Yeah. And everybody know me now from Instagram. I'm one of the number one credit educators in the industry. Mm-hmm. So, I teach on how, you, how to sue the credit report agency, how to sue the debt collectors, and how to basically remove any items from your credit report, right? Okay. So, as consumers, right, we was tricked. And people think that you have to live with bad credit, yeah. right? So basically, they say we have no power. We got all the power, right? So the reason why we got all the power is because we can use the laws in our favor, right? So we can use the FDCPA, right, towards the debt collectors. We can use the FCRA towards the credit report agencies, which a lot of people know them as credit bureaus, right? So basically, we was tricked. So in order to level your life up and go to the next level, people need to understand the foundation. And the foundation is credit, right? right? So I'm going to give the people some game on how you can take it to the next level by suing the credit report agencies. So basically, let's say, for instance, if you got your credit report and if you know how to properly dissect your credit report and look at violations and errors, and if you can find those violations, you can sue for them. So you right? so you giving all that away in the free course? I'm giving all that away. All this million dollars worth of game, right? Okay, yes. So this, this game right here, people pay thousands for, mm-hmm. all right? But I'm giving it away all right here. So basically, what so you you're can, giving it to anybody that that hit that number. Anybody hit that number gonna get this game. That number three three four five zero eight forty five zero one. Text leverage to three three four five zero eight forty five zero one. Leverage. I know there's a couple motherfuckers out there that ain't gonna know how to spell leverage. It's, it's on the screen. <laughs> All right, but we are gonna still help you get that goddamn credit right. Yes. So you can live mean. Let's get it. Let's get it. So I'm gonna give you an example, right? So far as bankruptcies, so a lot of people think bankruptcy is the end of your life. So bankruptcy don't You're right because I definitely thought bankruptcy was the end of nigga life. You know what I mean? I ain't had to file bankrupt, but I was damn near dead one time. Yeah, yeah. it sound bad, I right? It was over. Yeah, bankruptcy is not that bad technically when it's on your credit report because it can be removed. So let me give you this example. This is the violation. So with the bankruptcy, the first thing you need to do is send a letter to the courts, right? So you can look on your credit report. You can go down to the creditor section. In the creditor section. You're going to see bankruptcy court, Atlanta, bankruptcy court, Philly, whoever, you know, that the person did the bankruptcy with. So the thing about bankruptcy is the bankruptcy courts don't report to the credit reporting agencies, the credit bureaus. They don't report. Right. So when they put on your credit report, they are lying to you and saying, oh, uh, this bankruptcy on your credit report. The bankruptcy court reported it to us. But in reality, they did not. Right. So basically, the credit reporting agencies, the secondary agencies, they went to the PACER system and they pulled your information without you knowing. Uh-huh. Right. So they pull your information. They throw it on your credit report and they list the bankruptcy court as the furnisher. And as we all know, if you know anything about credit, a furnisher is someone who can report anything to your credit report. Right. Right. So by the bankruptcy court not reporting to the credit report agencies, who's the furnisher? Mm. It's not. It's no furniture. Right. So the credit report agencies trick people to believe that the bankruptcy court was the furniture, right? Mm-hmm. So that's a violation of its own. So if you find that violation because it's already there, and then guess what? If you dispute, 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 and they don't remove it, next thing they're going to do is blacklist you, right? Because mm-hmm. if you dispute so many times without any results, you get thrown in the backlist, and people be like, oh, I can't do anything about it. I can't do anything about it. You can do a lot about it because now you got to sue them. Because the violation is already there. It's in the FCRA. So according to 15 U.S.C. Code 1681EB, which is 100% maximum possible accuracy, that bankruptcy is not 100% maximum possible accuracy because it don't supposed to be there because they are not the furniture. All right, now, I'm how just long, long did the suit take, though? So sometimes the suits take up to two weeks or 30 days to get done. Damn, so that's that quick? That quick. So I'm telling you, like, okay, I built... A seven-figure credit repair company, right? You know, by helping people, you know, get items off their credit report. But we have found the fastest way to get items removed is by suing. 
right? Uh -huh. So you don't have to wait no seven years for items to fall off your credit report. People think you have to wait seven years. No, you don't. You can do something about it right away. Uh -huh. So if you learn how to sue these crooks, right, then guess what? These items can fall off within two to three weeks and you can get money for them. So my recent client that we took, you know, the credit uh, bureaus to court on, yeah. we just got a $6,000 settlement check. Okay. Mm. A six thousand dollars settlement check off him having bad credit. Mm. I'm just gonna say this too. Damn, like one motherfucker that I do trust is motherfuckers that talk, and when they give you information, they be putting the numbers in with the letters. <laughs> I trust them niggas because my lawyer did the same thing and got me off a motherfucker eighty nine pound weed case under the fourteen C Act in the ten A B C to the D. <laughs> you know what he's talking about. This can't go down, Yana. This nigga know what the fuck he talking about. All right. So, you know, I appreciate you coming and get this game up. Keep giving. Let's it. get it. Okay. So, all right. So, that go for any corporation, like any creditor that's on your credit report, right? So, if they're reporting things on you as well, if it's not 100% maximum possible accurate, you can sue them too. So, like, let's say, for instance, if you can't get a bank account, if you can't get a bank account open, then you may be in check systems or early warnings, right? Yeah. So, in check system early warning, those are secondary agencies. They report information on you as well without your consent, right? And then they violate the FCRA. Oh. So, they are not controlled by the FDCPA. That's only for debt collectors. The FCRA is controlled by all these corporations. So with them corporations, you can take them to court as well. You can sue them. And then once that information get out of there, then now you can open up all these bank accounts, right? And you can build relationships with them like some of the other people was on this show was saying. And guess what? You can run the bag up. Mm. That's major. But the way he breaks shit down, like, I ain't even got no goddamn questions for the next. But, 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 Damn. But, but that's the fastest suing system in the game. That's bro. the fastest. Suing is the fastest. And I never heard you can sue that quick. That's why I'm like, look at you. You surprised your rat. Look, look at this. So I'm going to tell you, for no reason. you can sue in the federal court or you can sue in small claims court. So our tactic is we like to sue in small claims court because most people in the industry who are suing like in federal court, they still get like, you know, sometimes $1,500 check, $2,000 checks. But in small claims court, you pay less of fees and you still able to get the same type of money, right? Without having to go to federal court. And like I said, the biggest check that I got for one of my clients was six thousand dollars. That was just like a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, but you don't want to be fucking with the feds anyway. You don't want to be messing with the feds. Yeah. You don't want to oh, do all that paperwork. It's more nigga. paperwork. I got something for you. Messing with the feds is more paperwork when you can just come go to your local small claims court, put in your summons and complaints. Then guess what? They're gonna write you a letter. They're gonna respond to you. Hey, oh, how can we handle this situation? Because they know. Oh, this person know what they're talking about. What you said six thousand dollars, nigga. Six thousand. I sue for the max all the time. You can sue for like a hundred dollars or something if you just want to get the item off. I mean, who wants a hundred dollars when you're entitled to thousands Absolutely. for inaccuracies on your credit report? Absolutely. That's major. Before we go any further, nigga, is your war eagle or roll tide? Man, it's roll tide. Oh, all right. It's roll tide. Well, <laughs> and to get this game from Big Bobby, man, aka Mr. Credit Yourself himself, you know what I mean? Is you gotta text leverage to 334 508 4501 334 508 4501. Now, Bobby, what is a good credit score? You know, you hear so many different things. What could get you in the game? Where do you gotta be? What's the minimum you gotta be to really get in the game? So basically, it's not about your credit score. A lot of people think it's about your credit score. Oh, shit. I tell people it's about the basically the thicker your profile, the more money you're entitled to. The more age okay. your profile is, the more money you're entitled to. So I recommend at least six to 12 months of. Like 10 to 12 items on your credit report, right? So if you got 10 to 12 items on your credit report, they're at least 6 to 12 months old, then guess what? You can go to that bank and damn near get anything that you want, right? So the name of the game is what? Access, leverage, optimize other people's money by using credit. So that's how you can get wealthy. Mm. That's why you're going to be texting leverage to what fucking fucking number? The 334-508-4501. 334-508-4501. 4501. Let me tell you so something. Damn, you can trust you know Bobby, what? man. We was taught wrong because everybody believed, oh, I got an 800. Mm -hmm. I got a what's name? Yeah, so oh, stop bragging man. on that little funky ass score you got, man. Shit don't mean nothing, because man. I've been out here you doing this shit for years. you can have an 800 credit score with just two trade lines. Right. But it's thin. The profile is thin. The bank ain't going to trust you. The bank not going to trust, trust you, a person nigga. with thin profile. Oh, yeah, they trust you. <laughs> so Jeez. you just got two trade lines on your credit report and you got an 800 credit score, right? And look at this. 
if you was lending somebody some money, and guess what? They had 10 other trade lines on their credit report, and they paying every month on time. Who you going to trust? That person with that 720 with 10 accounts or that person with an 800 with two trade lines that's not theirs? Right. I'm trusting a nigga with the 10 accounts. No, you don't know, but that's... That's just major because everybody was so caught up in the hood, especially in the hood. Oh, I'm a, I'm a eight ten. I'm a I'm a seven seventy five. What's the highest credit score you can get? Eight fifty. Eight fifty. Mine's yeah. about an eight ten right now. Oh, I got you beat. Nigga. You was five fifty. I'm at like a seven something, seven some eight fifty, seven twenty, seven thirty. That's major. I'm somewhere around it, nigga. I can go get whatever I want. Nigga. Now, Bobby, just know that. Give us some of the stuff that you're giving away in this free course when they text his number and sign up. So when they text that number, I'm going to show them how to properly read their credit reports. I'm going to show them how to identify violations. Mm. And then I'm going to show them after they finish the course, I'm going to show them how to go get the bag as well without even having any money. So they don't even mm. need no money to do this. They don't even need no money really to do this. So you can fix your credit on, the, on your own. I did mine within one year. Like I said, I started in 2017 learning about credit. By 2018, I had like a 750 plus credit score. And since then, 2019, that's when I opened the business, the business right? I invested in myself with a $5,000 credit card. And guess what? I done made multi-millions of dollars after that. But, right? but they, they, could, they, could, they take in the speedy route because you giving them the information. So you suffered so and walked so they could run. So they can run. Absolutely. Okay. So now they ain't got to work. It ain't got to take a year for them because... You giving them the information that's going to get them right there. So it's like, no, you, you ain't got to jump on this local train and stop at all the dumb ass stops. We get on the express chain. So we only stopping here, here, and here, and we at the destination. Yes, sir. Okay, cool. That's major. Now, once again, what y'all need to do is text leverage to 334-508-4501. 334-508-4501. Leverage. Before we go, let me let me get them a generational wealth hack, right? Mm. So this is a generational wealth hack. So this is this is the the game I give my you know my students, right? Who pay thousands, but I'm gonna give it away right now, mm. right? A lot of people gonna be mad. It's okay. You don't mean so, perfect game. They get over that. This shit. is what you do. This is what you do, right? So the first step you want to do is you want to build your credit score out to at least seven fifty plus, right? Mm -hmm. By getting those ten to twelve accounts. Right. By getting those accounts aged at least six to 12 months. All right. So next is what you want to do is you want to start building relationships with your local banks and credit union. Right. So you want to open checking accounts. You want to open savings accounts. You want to probably open like Roth IRA accounts, putting like 20, 30 dollars in it because you build in a relationship with these banks. So the more the more products you get with these banks, the more of a relationship that you're going to have. And the thing about credit unions, you're going to have an internal credit score. So with that internal credit score, that's going to determine your worthiness to that credit union, right? So after you do that, then next thing you know, you need to go and start applying for these credit cards, right? Because credit cards to us and how I was taught, right, is cash. So people think loans is just you get cash money with loans. Credit cards equal cash too because you can liquidate them, right? right. So with these credit cards, let's say for instance, you get two $20,000 credit cards, right? 0% interest for 12 months. What you can do is you can take those credit cards, you can liquidate those credit cards, right? Take the whole $20,000 off, off both credit cards. You got 0% interest for 12 months to pay this money back. So what I need you to do is you need to get your business plan, right? Get your LLC, get your business plan. Once you get your business plan, you need to determine the marketing for that business. You need to determine how much, you start, how much it is to start that business, right? And then on those credit cards, just by you liquidating the whole amount, you may have to pay only $200 a month, right? So that's for the whole year, that's like, what, $2,400? You can liquidate $20,000 from both, right? So you got $40,000. So a year is going to take you $2,400 to pay that back for the year at that 0% interest. So you go ahead and have that money saved for that year for that. And then guess what? You're going to invest into a business, right? So you invest into a business that's going to bring you a return back on your money within 12 months. So once that business brings you your return back in 12 months, then guess what? Everything after that is profit. You done paid the credit cards back and everything. But guess what? Your credit score may tank for those 12 months because you're getting on your personal side, right? So it may tank for those 12 months, but after those 12 months, guess what? You didn't just build some type of generational wealth, and all you got to do is keep doing that 100 more times. So that's how we optimize credit. Mm. Damn. That's game. Once again, you need to text leverage. The 334-508-4501. 334-508-4501. And Bobby is going to give you his free course, man. 
Like, like, give give us another thing that's in that free course, man. What else is in it? Run anything down that's in the free course. Okay. Run it down. So basically, like I said, you're gonna get how to read your credit report, how to dispute items off your credit report, what banks to go to and build those relationships with, right? How to liquidate credit cards and how to optimize your credit. Them five yeah. things. So listen, man, this is another episode of me and I was where we gained business by life. We had my man up here, Big Bobby, all the way from Alabama, aka Mr. Credit Yourself. You know what I'm saying? Because you're gonna credit yourself once you fix your credit. You ain't gonna you you gonna have to credit yourself. You ain't gotta credit Bobby. Bobby don't get no credit. You gonna credit yourself because Bobby's just putting the information out there, but you're gonna go do the work in order to take it to another level. So start paying yourself on the back right now, cause you're gonna sign up. You're going to go get this number. You're going to get with Bobby. You're uh-huh. going to get the free course. And then you're going to be able to credit yourself because you fix your own credit. And this is another episode of Million Dollars River Game. Been the spotlight. And it's just like that. Right. Now in the game, right? This this technically like your first interview, man. Yeah. Since you've been in the game. Yeah. Um, A lot of the younger cats that's in the game, they don't like fucking with interviews. You know what I mean? And you you felt that type of way. Why, did, why, do you, why do y'all be feeling that type of way? Especially you. Internet wild right now, bro. So the wrong thing said on the interview might turn to clickbait. Then it's like I want to get my back. I want to get my brand up to the point where it's like y'all know what's going on. Sometimes I watch an interview with an up and coming artist, and they like just reading Google shit. You know what I'm saying? Shit that they think. You know what I'm saying? So it'd be like I don't want to step into that. Let me turn up. So when I come through the door, they know what's going on. Like man, that nigga. You know what I'm saying? But I fuck with y'all so hard. Just so I was telling you on the phone, like you doing that twenty and you being a rapper that you know what I'm saying shit how it went how it went and y'all boys standing and still doing y'all thing that's motivation y'all don't even know y'all putting out here you know what I'm saying so appreciate that now that's real but you know it's like it's like we just wanted to create something for the young cats right um where they could have an outlet because it seemed like me and Cuz you know always talk about like damn you know it wasn't no outlet out here for the young cats it was like everybody was going against them. Like, you know, it was it was a movement of people that was like, oh, man, you know, a lot of people trying to convert now because it's a fashionable thing to do. And they seen a lot of people seeing what we done with me and I was for every game. But a lot of people, they didn't fuck with the young boys. Oh, for real, down there. And, and he used to be in the crib snapping. These hating ass niggas, they mad because they ain't making it. Motherfuckers ain't making it rap. Motherfuckers ain't nobody. And, you know, people get on a microphone and they try to humiliate these young boys or whatever for their approach no. and for them speaking their reality of what it is now. Um, me, I'd rather you be rapping it than living it. You know what I mean? With, with young cats, period. I don't, I can't, I can't say, oh yeah, they doing this, they doing that, because we did some crazy, goofy ass shit yeah. when we was young niggas. You know, and uh, and I think it's just a stigma that people have where they try to, they try to circumvent some, try and try to keep them down, try to tr- suppress them through media, because media is a big thing, and marketing is a big thing when you're an artist and you got music coming out. Is a big thing to be when you go to platforms to be able to talk about your music, talk about who you is, be able to tell your story and humanize yourself instead of you being clickbait and a motherfucker try to make you look like a goofy. Because oh, right. they can't relate to they can't relate to your world and to and they don't understand that yesterday is the fuck over. You know what I mean? And I just hate old niggas who life is a throwback Thursday. <laughs> no, that's what it be. You know what I mean? I and, and I was sitting back and it would just seem like niggas was just, you know, talking down on the young niggas because they wasn't lyrical and because they didn't rap like how we rap, but we didn't rap how the niggas that came before us rapped. I wasn't running around here talking about the hip, hip to the, the hop. hop the yeah, hip. yeah, I yeah. wasn't doing that shit. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, when I see the old niggas beating the young niggas up, because really, uh, it really come from the fact that a kid could blow overnight and the shit we had to go through to get on for a kid to be able to blow overnight. Oh, cuz, you know, that's crazy. You, you, not, you never got on, Shut cause. up, nigga. I, you know how much money I got from this music <laughs> No, but shit. you never got on, though. Fuck you you, never, you never blew up. I didn't, but I you got was a lot a of money for this music shit. But Fuck you never you blew up, about. so what? Okay, go ahead. a lot of money, nigga. Fuck you talking about. See, you fucking my thoughts up. Make me slap the shit out. Go ahead, say what you're saying. That a, somebody can blow, man, somebody can blow up overnight. Get my hand and sugar slap Jolly Ranchers out your fucking I mind. I told a nigga in the airport that the other day. He was like, baby face Ray. Man, what up? Listen to my music. I'm like, bro, if I hear you can be rapping like Jay-Z right now. What? What can I do for you? Like, nigga, we down there it's out of eye. You might make something. You might be out of here tomorrow and blow past me. So, you know what I'm saying? Right. I just talk, I just gave him a little game, but exactly what you're saying is right for sure. Right, but I feel like a lot of the older niggas got bitter because niggas could just blow overnight, and it's like, no, nah, they could blow overnight That's because a fucked of the work up thing, we put though, in. For sure. You feel what I'm saying? Because of the work that the niggas that came before them put in, that's the reason why they able to blow overnight. And for me to see any young 
minority kid, black, brown, yellow, motherfucking purple. I don't give a fuck what color you are. Come from out the ghetto from having nothing and make something of your fucking self. I don't give a fuck how you did it. Congratulations. Yeah, for real. Because you know how hard it is to come from the circumstances we come from and be some fucking body. Just to have an I opportunity. Mean, right. You know what I'm saying? Right. To be sure. somebody that motherfuckers all around the world is talking about. You come from this low ass city, but niggas in New Zealand is talking about you. So you supposed to big the young niggas up. I I love the young niggas music. I don't hear tell you. I don't get in the car and listen to no old niggas, man. I'm not doing that shit. You ain't playing no old nothing? I mean, I do. I play the old. Yeah, he play the old, old school, school song. I'm talking about no, no, he little Jay the kids, little this here, this I that. I mean, dog. In my lifetime, I, if the kids come out with something new, yes. But I'm just not randomly getting in the car and just throwing old shit on. I done listened to that shit a thousand times. Oh, okay. I done listened to that shit a hundred thousand times. These young niggas drop music. Every fucking week. Okay. It's always music for me to Man. listen to. It's always albums for me to check out. I don't got to ride around in the fucking car and listen to fucking Tupac. I already know the fucking words to this song. I'm trying to listen to some new shit. I'm trying to find out who the next nigga is. I'm trying to be ahead of the curve. I'm not trying to be behind that motherfucker. I need mm -hmm. to come to low like, no, little, little boombox. Who is that? Out of Memphis, Tennessee. Turn nigga right popping. Yeah. Yeah. Baby, shoot him up. Yeah, out of motherfucking Georgia, he on fire. Man. Uh, little knock your biscuit out. Yeah, Chicago. Yeah, we trying to be ahead of the curve like we was with Pooh, with niggas that's King Vaughn, niggas that, okay, they about to make that turn. They right there. We got to go, go get them that push. We got to go get them and, and, and give them that push because they right there. They and making that turn. Y'all been doing that too. Hang that's on, what it's lie. about. Like this is down there coming out here, stamp of approval. Are you doing yeah. something? You know what I'm saying? So That's what it's about. You feel what I'm saying? And how long we been trying to get with you? No, for a minute. So that, that show you. We been, that nigga's on our radar. He that nigga. I called you a year ago. I said, yo. And when we hit you, I came said, to the show, remember? Yeah. I was kicking it. I hell said, yeah. listen, let's get this, man. Let's get this working. So boom, boom, boom. Because you're important, and it's important to make sure you roll out. And when you come out first, that that shit is right. Like I'm gonna be straight up. Uh, it's probably, you know, some don't even make it to him. Some some make it to our people that they handle shit for us. Probably like forty a month. No, it's like forty nos a month, and people that's trying to get on here mm. because we're not taking anybody. And when you decide, like artists gotta understand, if you're doing your press run, we don't do press runs. We do exclusive shit. So if you're doing a press run running around New York, you won't make it here. Yeah. Majority of the times, we don't want you because you're doing all, and we, we want exclusive, we want real conversation. We don't want you to be running the five interviews. You got the same shit on at every fucking interview. Man, I did a press run in New York one time. They made me have an album release with Paul Wall, and I'm, I'm like, man, I ain't doing this shit no more. Shit over with. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, you know what I mean? Shout out to Paul Wall and yeah, shout out, no, no disrespect to him. Shout out to everybody. It ain't no, disrespect sure, But it's like, God, but it's different. It's di I understand what you're saying. <laughs> you want your own shit. I ain't going back. You shit want your own shit. Real. You want your own shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I ain't know though. I ain't know it was. You know what I'm saying? It was, mm -hmm. I hate crazy. to even switch it, but that shit fucked me up. I was doing a promo, and they had me open uh, out release with Paul Wall with the This Is Fifty nigga made me do some. I'm like, man, this shit crazy, man. I'm straight. I ain't doing no more interviews. At the, at the end of the day, I think it's really important to who's doing your PR because a lot of them motherfuckers. That's what it was. They be too. out of touch with the reality. And I, I tell the labels this all the time. They call me. They well, pocketing we, the money, doing what they. You know what I'm saying? Shit. The label ain't there looking, so they doing anything. Hey, we gonna throw my hourly Paul Walker. We put Babyface right on your flyer. Take the money. You know what I'm saying? I'm already knowing what's going on. I mean, you know what I'm saying? So a lot of times, like I said, they be PR people. And I tell them all the time from labels, they call me, well, we need. No, you don't need them. You took them to five different joints. We ain't no fucking. This ain't that type of joint. We don't, we don't make the moves that we fucking make. Running around doing all this jumping it. You're not coming here with all that. You you, you told a story already on three four dawns. You, the same shit. Oh, but it's different. No, 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 no. This is a boutique stop. If it's not boutique, you're not coming here. We don't give a fuck who you think you are. That's a million dollars worth. Sometimes nigga want to come just to say they came. Like well, I was. They want to come to get the get to get that stamp. No, for sure. You know what I mean? And we not going for that, especially not him. You already know what he on. I ain't even gotta speak on. Gilly don't give a fuck about I mean, nothing. So you know, it's just it is not. So the artists, <laughs> artists, talk to your PR. <laughs> That's what I give a fuck about. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that motherfucker don't stop even. Yeah, boy's getting a lot of it right now too. She be like a helicopter. You know what I mean? See them wires come through. 
these. This, this, I see this real money, hugging man. in the in the kitchen with the champagne. This I said, money, yeah, this like, shit on. Hey, listen, man, you yeah. work hard, man. You no, know for sure. Every but, time but I'm scrolling, the, I pay. I was in the airport doing something. So. But the best part about us, we don't lead with money. You know what I mean? Yeah, we, we don't, we don't, don't flash that. We we lead we lead with respect. You know what I mean? We show respect to everybody. We show love to everybody. You know what I mean? And they show love back, and we we truly appreciate it. We represent the bottom of this shit. You feel me? The yeah. bottom of this shit. The very bottom. And that's why we got, you know, we just happy to have dudes like you now. Right. Now, who is it out there you want to work with that you ain't do nothing with on some real shit that you like, damn, I fuck with them. Man, I, I want to get it in with Sometimes them. when I be a fan of nigga music, I don't even be wanting to work. I just want to be a fan because it's like, I don't know how to. But it be mostly producers for real. Like niggas who got hard beats. And shit, if you are, you already know. Hell yeah, I want to leave. But I don't got no specific person. I just want to, you know. Just listen to that was some my, real- my fans kind of like fucked that up for me. I be doing shit with collab artists and then they be like, why you. You know what I'm saying? So I just be just letting shit flow naturally. If I bump into you and we rocking, let's get it on. But I ain't about to, you know what I'm saying? You know what's crazy? When you go to the ground, when you shit out, majority of the, I'm talking about, majority of women be banging your shit no like cap. crazy. I'm talking about, and they stories, shit, like you a story killer. Babyface Ray is one of the story if killers If I repose my shit up, mm. it'll be, in them stories, they putting their makeup on, they at the restaurant, they walking in the mirror, I'm like, you're doing this like a soundtrack to all the baddies. They want me to do a damn near all girl shit. You know what I'm saying? But You need I, to do an all girl show in one of these cities. No, nah, hell no. Nah. They want me to do like some all girl music, just a, a tape for all the ladies type shit. A whole tape? Yeah. But I appreciate that shit. Dude. I don't know. I think they just fuck with a nigga because, you know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. you not extra. Yeah. Now they love you. Remember I told you when I was coming up so and I was serving, back. niggas be extra with that shit. And yeah. that shit a funny feeling. It'll, you would piss a girl off doing all that and lame shit. so extra. Look at this. He just chilling. Look at this cool what nigga. What's up, man? How you doing, baby? Yeah. I'm baby face Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Wallow, too, man. I, I, I had a conversation with baby face. Oh, yeah, baby face. Hell yeah. yeah nigga had- called me at five in the morning talking about, you coming on the show and y'all had to. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, no, nah, bro, I don't know. You feel me? I called him. But I'm you like, said yeah. something on the... And then we end up having a conversation. That shit was lit. Yeah, could you remember I tell you? I said, yo, yeah. man. I said, cuz, we got Babyface Ray coming to the studio, right? What did he? I don't know. I don't know until the fucking morning. I, oh. like, like, he coming 10 o'clock, like 10 o'clock to our studio. In Philly. I don't know until that morning of that I'm like, hold up. Cuz. I said, cuz. This fuck baby me face. Up. I'm like, I said, I said, Ray, man. We, I, called, no, I called him. I called Ray. I said, yo, where you at, man? He, I think he was like, I'm in the D. I'm like, you in the D, man? We pull. He said, and I told him, I said, yo, bro, do you know we? And then I called Gil. I'm like, yo, cuz, no, this baby face, baby face. So he I was me. like, oh, it? He's like, yeah. I'm like, oh, no, because Babyface a fucking legend. You no, know, for sure. But that shit threw me off because for two weeks, for a whole week, he like, dog, Babyface, Ray, don't forget. <laughs> nigga, Saturday, nigga. Yeah. 10 in the morning, you know you be high, cuz. Yeah, let's get it. Don't forget. Then he called me, cuz. This baby face, baby face. So I'm like, what the fuck you mean, baby face? Baby, baby face. <laughs> oh, he? Yeah. He like, yeah. I'm it's like, that. All right, cool. <laughs> he like, oh, all right. Uh, you know, I just had to tell you, I, I thought it was baby face. Because I'm like, prepping. My whole mind, sometimes when I'm going in the beast mode, I'm like, damn, you know, this is what we're going to, you know, I'm already scheduled it in my mind how I'm approach this shit. I'm going to walk to it. So when he come, I'm like, oh, shit, a lunch. And we just went with it. But I, but but it was important for him to know. I'm just, I said, you know when I said, yo, you know baby face, right? He said, yeah, I heard of him. I said, okay. He was on his radar. Wow, Dog, baby the baby face is smooth as shit. Yeah, they smooth. That's some shit. Ain't that hey, that nigga shit? cool as fuck, man. I yes, know he that is. Nigga. That nigga super cool. That nigga I'm didn't like, even damn. walk into the studio. He glid into that I motherfucker. I swear. He just was like this. <laughs> Whipper pill started playing. As soon as the door opened, listen. <laughs> Matter of fact, he opened the door. Listen, I ain't going to fuck. I don't care. He was stuck, wasn't he? I ain't going to fuck. He, he, was, he was stuck like a groupie in this motherfucker. Listen, in, in, no, he in was on point. I said, Lito. Baby face walked in. He like this. I said, Lito, we got to clean the spot. Babyface coming in, right? Because, you know, I'm thinking this nigga come with an entourage or yeah. a whole hookup. As soon as he opened the door, all I heard is, when you go to work, the nigga start gliding across the floor. Yeah. Oh, oh, we I'm talking about his, his hair was motherfucking oh, blowing. They, a, motherfucker was, a motherfucker was right next to him combing his hair and shit. We in the air. I'm like, yo, this is a cold motherfucker. And we you got a way so, to so when he stopped, right? Mm-hmm. There's no bullshit. He stopped. I'm like, oh, shit, this is a legend. I'm ready to call my mom and shit like, yo, baby face here, right? That nigga stop. <laughs> nigga Ray try to get his mitten. I, that nigga I, I Jackie stopped. fucked and shit. This, this and Ray called my mom. Listen, listen. 
<laughs> my mom, I don't know what would have happened. Yeah, my baby face, you want some of this, man? My mom like, grown up. Jackie pocket, grown. Man. She know she grown. Yeah. See, she going to shoot a shot. So I'm like, <laughs> so I sit back. I'm like, he just stopped in the air. And you know, when you a next level, prince type level, you introduce yourself different. He said, hi, I'm baby face. Yeah. I said, I know who you is, legend. <laughs> he said, oh. And he just glared to the chair. I said, I'm looking like, wow. He was. And let me tell you something, right? It was deep. Let me tell you something, right? This nigga, when I tell you this nigga's a fan, fan, <laughs> like, he go in the fan mode. And sometimes... There's only certain people, though. No. And, and it's cool to show love. But sometimes the shit be embarrassing, man. No, I don't do that to him. No, it do. I'm you a fan of music. Big Daddy Kane. Oh, no, I had to, he's a legend. I had to It was 5.14 in the I morning. Had, he was mad. I think he was what mad. What you do to Big Daddy Kane first? Listen, he, we in the airport, I think right? I blew his cover. He walking through... I seen him through I the said, mask. I said, yo, that's Big Daddy Kane right there. That nigga said, no, it's not. Then he looked back. <laughs> that nigga said, Big Daddy Kane! <laughs> that nigga was like this. What the fuck is she doing? He took his mask off. He came over there. He was he was a little mad at me, though. But he I, was. I, I reconnected. He wanted, with him. With a, he wanted to hit you with some old school shit. 89 hooking. That nigga's a legend, man. See, see, see. You, you know what it is. I got to break this down because I think a lot of people don't understand this. I grew up in a town where the music was a soundtrack to the struggle that was taking place in America. It was We was fucked up. Only thing we had as an outlet to release was the music. Now, the music is still the same way. It ain't the struggle. But the music is, motherfuckers will bang your music crazy. You got real life fans. But the problem with now and different and, and yesterday, because of Instagram, people got 10,000 followers. They'll see Babyface Ray. And that motherfucker, they won't approach you. They'll just say it from the far. But this nigga play your music every day. He turned it up and life because of your music. He won't play it because his one homie be like, come on, man, you diggy. Don't go over there. He won't say nothing to you or nothing. He'll just be standing there. Or then you got the other nigga that's like, he in the club. Shh, man, I'm. He listen to your music driving around with you, but when he in the club, he he, he got a section over there from y'all's. Man, we get money. I got the same shit. Swear, Danny want to step I, on listen, you. Nigga banging my shit in the car right now. I got the same watch. That nigga got that nigga ain't nobody, man. Chill. We don't give a fuck about them niggas. We live in a weird time with that. Like, like a lot of young people, they not fucking with the fan shit. They ain't nobody. Everybody is above being a fan. It's like you're a dick eater because you like somebody's music that you listen to every day. That you play in your car, you play when you get dressed. It motivates you to get some money. But when you see him, if you say something to him, you're a dick eater. Stop that weird dumb shit, yo. Then they start off like that, like, bro, no dick sucking shit. Like, why? For what? I, and I always be like, bro, what you talking about? Like, come on, now. I do music. You, you know what I'm saying? I know what you are. Right. And it just, we got to get up out of it. It kind of make you a dick eater when you say that. Because if I ain't <laughs> never been a dick eater, why I'm going to say not, not on no dick eating shit? Like, what why you think about, about that? Come get this picture, come up, Like, I seen Nas. I did snap out. I saw, you snapped out for Nas. I saw Nas. I lost my mind. I did. But. It was different. My shit was wasn't loud. I didn't scream that shit out in the airport. I walked up, nigga, come here, nigga. I love you, nigga. Nigga, <laughs> he, he, he gave me he gave me no, mummy rap. He mummy rap Nas. No, he mummy rap. No, but see, I was so excited. Where you catch him at? At the airport. I was like, no, I fuck with you too, Gilly. I was like, fuck all that, man. Listen, nigga. He mummy rap. I love you, nigga. I grew up off your shit. I was Why? like, wait, did I just tell Nas, fuck all that? Everybody <laughs> told me he fucked yeah. with me too. Like, I mean, it, I was so excited. <laughs> he like, I fuck with you too. Fuck all that, man. Listen, nigga, I love you, nigga. You know what's crazy? I'm not too 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 cool to be a fan, one of a nigga back, I see. Back in the day, 95, we used to have our cousin, Nessie Carr. Every week we used to go out there and do player shit, give it to chicks, whatever. So, 94, some shit, 95. Me and him used to have a battle. The battle was he was Nas, I was Jay Z. I was, oh, shit. I was the Jay Z, the Jay Z guy. He was Nas' number one supporter. So we used to argue, man, that nigga hotter than this. It was written better than Reasonable Doubt. It was a back and forth. It was an unbelievable. Like that battle. was later. It was like ninety six, ninety six, whatever it was. Yeah. But 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 it was like we listened. Only thing we listened to like a couple Pac. We always listened to all eyes on me. We listened to Reasonable Doubt, and it was written. That was the. For the young cats that never listened to that, go listen to them two albums. That was just, it was albums where them niggas was talking some shit like no other. Nah, for real. Niggas was never talking like that. A lot of rap wasn't on that. It was smooth. It was player mm -hmm. shit. You know, reasonable doubt that can't knock the hustle the black girl laws over here. And it was like, it was just crazy. We used to bet. And we was real, we, we was real fans. Mm hmm because that was the music. And you got it now, but like you just can't approach nobody. And that's fucked up. That's Instagram got it like that, man. Everybody feel like they know the musicians personally. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because they feel like they damn near with you throughout your life. If you post uh, enough on that motherfucker, they feel like they damn near your homeboy. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So Instagram got it bad it, right now. Everybody want to be somebody. And you know what's crazy? 
through my journeys in life, everywhere I'm going, I might be walking somewhere and a nigga turn around and say, Gilly, what's up, nigga? And then he catch himself like, damn, man, I am spoke to you like I knew you and shit. Damn, no, dog. for real. I, I be on your page all the time, though. So this, damn, I feel like I know you. You do, nigga. What's up, nigga? But, but that's the mentality. A nigga see me every day. He watch me every day. He be on, he watch my podcast. He fuck with what I got going on. Damn so when it, he see you me, his friend. he feel like, nigga, I know you, nigga. Like, and, and, and I'm going to keep it all the way real, though. That kind of takes the celebrity away from the celebrity a little bit. You know why? Because back in the day, you had to wonder how a nigga was. Oh my, I just said this. Back in the I day, was, you, you liked the, the nigga because of their music, literally. Like, yeah, literally. Yeah. You didn't know. You know See, what now, saying? you can like a nigga for his music, and then he show you a different nigga on the gram. You don't even like the nigga no more. Man, this bitch-ass nigga, mm. man. I don't even like that nigga. You, back in the day, artists couldn't expose themselves. They just put the music out. And you love that shit. You believe that shit, what they was talking. And that was that. And then you seen a motherfucker and you never seen a motherfucker. So it was like, oh shit. No, for it, real. You Pandemonium. feel what I'm saying? And you ain't see a nigga on. You ain't scroll down. You didn't know what he had on yesterday, the day before. You never seen a motherfucker except for on TV. So when you seen a motherfucker in person, shit. It's an entertainment uh, aspect on the game right now. If you ain't a little bit entertaining on Instagram or just period, then they down there straight. You got to have some type of energy. You know what we be going on, man. These cats be doing all this. It, it down there don't be feeling like gimmicks to them, but they be doing all type of shit. And it be like, man, that nigga be tripping. Yeah, I be seeing he a lot of old niggas rap, You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, I be seeing a lot of old niggas trying you, to keep wait, up with wait, these wait, young wait, niggas. Wait, wait, don't cut me off, wait. nigga. <laughs> be seeing a lot of old niggas trying man, to keep up with these up, young man. niggas, man. What old nigga that piss you off? No, ain't no old niggas piss me off, but it just be sad. It be like, bro. See, for me, I'm a nigga that's like this. If I came through and I rapped and I had my moment, I had my four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten year run, I made my money. Okay, I might be an older nigga out here. I might still do music. But I'm not out here trying to compete with you, my nigga. I'm not out here, no disrespect to nobody, but I'm speaking from my standpoint. I'm not going to be out here showing you no fucking watches, man. Yeah. I done showed you watches since I was motherfucking 19 years old, man. What the fuck do I look like at 46 years old talking about? To me, that's some loser shit. Because the young shit. niggas doing I'm, it. I'm, I'm too, I'm too, I'm not doing what the young niggas doing. I'm just telling you why they doing it. They feel like, man, hold on, this was going on. Let right. me throw my shit on there. Right. But see, for me, I am I just feel like a nigga supposed to be at a stage in life where you not competing with these young niggas. You eating with them. When you come to us, nigga, we want you to shine, nigga. We want you to have that shit on. We want you to look good. We want your album to go number one. We ain't trying to be up here competing yeah. with you. You that nigga. And we going to push that shit all week coming right. up to it. You that nigga. That's our job. That's what we do. You feel what I'm saying? That's our job, to put them niggas on the front line. You that nigga. Niggas be doing all that, don't be having the light on them, and they know to get the young nigga right there and have the light, oh, yeah, I'm about to shit on him. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? And then he trying to come up. You know what I'm saying? He trying Instead to come up, man. Giving a nigga the opportunity to turn up, nigga be like, man, Instead of taking no. him and say, let me post this young nigga. Wham! Let me turn him up. But that's, that, that, that's the world we live in, man, and it's like, it ain't just happening in the industry, it happened around the way. I remember one time me and Gil get a call by one of our partners we grew up with. Young niggas call us. Listen, man, we ready to put this nigga on fire, man. We ready. What's up, man? No, don't do that. Ho, ho. I had to tell him, yo, what you doing, man? You out here 40 years old running from the police, smoking weed, but the young boys getting high trying to fuck their young girls. Yeah. Oh, no, it's not going down that way. What the fuck is you doing out here? Right. Oh, no, man. You know, this, you know, this all ni Ho, ho, ho. This the young boy set. This mm -hmm. shit over with. That shit over that with, That shit man. we did in 88, bro. That, that shit, shit over is over with, man. You see what I'm saying? So all talking that, about some shit from 96 that tough and all shit, that. We, that shit is expired, bro. Mm -hmm. If you don't update that shit, it don't count. Don't worry about A these. lot of old heads feel like the shit that's going on don't matter. Which the streets down there did for sure, but a lot of old heads don't respect what's going on. They feel like it's a different, you know what I'm saying? It matter. And let me tell them old heads something. That new nigga out there right now is the old you. Mm -hmm. Let's be for real, old head. You ain't got no five to tens and your nigga's gonna kill you, nigga. <laughs> you ain't got no father. Kill you, nigga. 10 to 20 of you. Away from your wife. 
Five to ten. Baby leg knocking Ooh, on the door. Baby leg slapping <laughs> in the head with that dick. It's just over. a whipping the shit out your wife, man. You calling? You <laughs> five to ten. She ain't picking up. Oh, she was sturdy the first eight months she was in there, but guess what? She done did three bids with you now, she nigga. Ghosts. She thought it was over. That young boy got a fresh dub in him. Yeah, he got he could do a he fresh. He gonna shoot you till you catch you on fire, nigga. Yep, Steve. You already know. Ambulance ain't come from fire truck gonna come put you the fuck out first. Yep. Thought yeah. you was some trash, nigga. They put you the fuck out, then realized it was you. You out here fucking with these young boys. Leave them niggas alone. Stay out them niggas' world and do what old niggas is supposed to do, man. Get money and fall the fuck back and take care of your family, man. Uh, now, any enough. old head that gets spanked out here, I don't feel sorry for you, nigga. You should, should be past them. You shouldn't be out here playing tennis with these young niggas. Why they in the way anyway? I thought they was already out here. Niggas ain't don't want to go no. in. See, this is what y'all understand is young niggas. Y'all don't understand this. A lot of dudes went to the penitentiary. A lot of the street officials growing up in the 80s, 90s, they went to the penitentiary, got, got killed. Some of them went on dope. You got a lot of, when you see, most of the time, when you see an older street nigga out here, that mean they wasn't out here back in the day. Yeah. You wasn't outside back in the day. Everybody went to the penitentiary, died off, or somewhere getting on now. So now you out there and you lying to the young boys. Great storytellers. Yeah, because see, your pop, your pop, your pop. No, no, I don't even know that nigga. He wasn't out there with us. He called me, you talking to your pop from the penitentiary, he like, what, you talking about Corey? Yeah. <laughs> His name's C. Murder. You talking about Corey? <laughs> you talking about Keisha, brother? That nigga was he was he was going he was fuck. You know what I'm saying? So that's why you see niggas and they so animated, so hyped up to be. How you forty years old still trying to be? A, you you amped up to be a street nigga? Shit don't make no sense. So that's where the game fucked up at, and that's why a lot of you young cats y'all don't respect the older niggas because you looking at anybody, like like because the representation of an older nigga a lot of times it'd be a fucked up representation. It'd be a nigga from your neighborhood that's on goofy time. And it'd be a hater. <laughs> yeah, a hater. So it's just, it's just These crazy. young niggas is out here having it their way, man. Yeah. Like never before. Like these young, one thing about y'all young niggas, life has provided opportunities for y'all that's endless. So it's a lot of young niggas out here having it their way, man. And there's a lot of young niggas' whole team having it their way. My man over here, he ain't got not a lick of jewelry on or nothing. But we sit here and we talking about placing bets. He, that nigga pulled his phone up. Yeah, man, this is how much I bet this year. Niggas, 500,000. Damn. What the fuck? Who the fuck done did so, some shit like that? Yeah, yeah him right there. Yeah, oh, yeah. shit. Yeah, he 500,000 in this year just you on crazy. gambling and shit. Now, now y'all just see. No, no, I just want to say something. I didn't want to put it out there. Y'all just, just caught see him what, down at the casino. No, no, too. no, no. Y'all just see what happened. Now y'all know why I go to jail. You see how easily he pointed that nigga out? How you think I felt <laughs> on the stand? When that nigga was on the stand. Wallow did it. It was Wallow. He ain't do nothing, nigga. And I'm just saying, I'm, you just I'm pointed him out, though, nigga. God. Stop doing that shit around me. Niggas in around me is getting money, man. <laughs> how niggas is getting money, man. Yeah, man. You feel what I'm saying? You see how his man over there fucked $500,000 up? He don't need no. Niggas He's like, who, who the fuck did that? <laughs> yeah. Stay your so, ass up, fan doing it. <laughs> right. so and he got the quiet, and he got the, no, no, uh, bar through sports uh, betting yeah. at all time. Yeah, yeah but uh, and, and, and he got that quiet, he got that QM, that quiet money. Mm -hmm. Niggas just walking around chilling, ain't no extra <laughs> shit, letting the young boy shine. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. That's what it's about, quiet man. Quiet money, that's how you go, you know? Yeah, but yeah. before we get out of here, man, what motivation you got to that young nigga, that young you, that's out here that's trying to spit, I mean, that's trying to rap hustle, man. What type of game can you give them? What million dollars worth of game you could get in? You got to stop. Don't give up, man. Just keep going. Even when it feel like the shit over with, just keep going. You know what I'm saying? Like That's key. Keep going. Stay. Work, too. I don't just keep going. Work. Work on your craft. You know what I'm saying? Do different shit. Be creative. Try to get out the box. And that's it, shit. Shit. With an album out tomorrow, go get that. Go stream that. What's your favorite song on that one? Um, Masterpiece. You hear that, man? Masterpiece. Masterpiece. Yeah. Well, y'all go TikTok that shit. Y'all go jump in his comments and y'all let him know what's y'all favorite you know, song on the album. Babyface Ray. Detroit player. Million dollars worth of game, man. Yeah, appreciate you for coming through, man. It's it's really a before we get out. Of it, I just want to say this is really an honor for us, for you to never do interviews to say you know what I we I, I want to come fuck with y'all, you know. Don't do that. No, no, it, it do. It's an it's honor, honor, man, for real, dog. 
on some real shit. No, I appreciate man. y'all doing you know what y'all I mean? doing for the culture. You know, the young niggas. Anybody doing their thing, appreciate that. But sure. you a humble nigga. You know what I mean? You a laid back nigga. You could tell you ain't really for the cameras. You, you really just want to do the work, do your videos, go perform, fall back. You just that's just your personality. So for you to be like, no, nah, I'm gonna come fuck with y'all. We appreciate that shit. And man. shout out to Barrel Line for keep going back and forth. Shout out to Big B, man. Shout appreciate out to Barrel Line for making this shit shout happen. Shout out to Big B. I'm going to not be the fuck And out. I want to say shout out to Detroit, man. All the Detroit players doing their thing. And I love. Shout out to everybody in Detroit, man. Love, getting money doing their thing. I love the Detroit house. I wish he was from Detroit, though. No, I'm just saying. You know what I mean? I'm a player. They know. They yeah, know. We was flying in there. Didn't no, they gave me the key to the city. You should have heard him. They gave me the key to the city. We flying in. You heard me popping that shit this morning. He was saying some crazy shit. I ain't know. He was saying some crazy shit. No, but listen. I'll let you know that I know the D, though. Yeah, you know. I'm moving around this motherfucker. Barrel Line tried to go big on. Him and then I he said, like, oh, no, but we walk, you know, we land, we walk to the airport. He talk about, yeah, nigga, you in my town now, nigga. I'm saying, yeah, nigga, I had to let him know. I had to make, don't make me make some phone calls. Nigga, nigga. been in Detroit six times. My he done hung out with Peasy and, 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 and all and everybody down. This is my city. Spot, Get man. the fuck. I mean, Sloppy Crab. Shout out to I need uh, some nah, spot. for real. Sloppy, sloppy Crab. crab. This is my spot. Okay, Hold up, nigga. Do a couple I, spots. No, I think I know some players, some real life players. Shout them all out. Listen, shout out to all. I'm gonna just because I don't want to miss nobody. Everybody's doing anything, but shout out to the the Detroit hospitality. If they fuck with you, they fuck with you, and they show you love, man. So always that. I ain't try it. Ray Rob this shit out. You called me. I ain't got nothing to rob you for, nigga. Live, let him live. <laughs> I, mean, I ain't got nothing. That's right. That's they, you always got a little bankroll on you, nigga. Nah, fuck man, I ain't broke around. I got some. Uh, I'm, I'm, I ain't trying that. I'm nigga. just barely making it, man. I ain't got my nothing, Detroit man. niggas called me. They said Gilly and your cousin's another ass nigga. He out here on some dumb shit. <laughs> What's good? Is he on the menu or what? I said, no, I'll leave him off the menu, man. He said, all right. Nah, they they left you off the I said, your fucking life out. He's going to pistol whip the money out your pockets. <laughs> fucking wrong with you. And I think he had your presidential on that day, too. He's like, oh, Gilly, you got that clean joint on. No diamonds in it. I oh, thought you was coming president for 40 today. right now. Huh? Remember you called me you said you was going no, I, I'm chilling today. All right, all right. I'm chilling. I got you. See, I'm a chill today. Okay, oh, what he got calm. on the old Cardi? Yeah, with the bracelets. Oh yeah, you think a nigga? Right. You think Clean, a Detroit nigga won't slap you for that shit? Had that shit calm. on the no, MGM tonight. They don't even know what that is. No, they people don't look don't at this, that. This like, clean shit, man. No, you got the Cardi bracelet on with the Cardi watch. Oh, Van Cleef. Oh, the Van Cleef. Oh, oh yeah, they know what that is. Fuck you, talking about real Detroit. I ain't seen that Van Cleef. Oh yeah, they be like, wallow. That's a nice watch. He be saying shit he doing. Van Cleef. Real, hey, real mm-hmm. Detroit nigga be like, wow, where you get that from? No, it's levels. Take that one fuck off. <laughs> right, it is levels. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's levels. <laughs> Take that one fuck no, off. You, you ain't do that right. Ho, ho. I was holding this shit for you. Why you ain't been come? You could have been came and got this, baby. I've been holding no, this shit No, he got to slap you in the head, though, let you know it's real. Sometimes he ain't got to. Yes, he do. It, everything you is about the manner. Yeah. Nigga, he I was go, a get him boy. I was a get him boy. He don't know you a bitch, so he going to think you did 20 years. He going to think you might got a little fight in you, so he slapped you in the head and let the gun go off at the same time so you think you shot. <laughs> what? <laughs> you wait for blood to jump all out your biscuit and shit. <laughs> you take that shit off fast and shit. Man, listen, man. Keep playing, nigga. I'm gonna give your leg warm. No. That's when the martial arts come into play. You get nigga shit he don't even know about. He walking off. Well, you get my money. <laughs> That's what the martial arts come out. Martial take, arts, the fuck is you talking fuck about? Fuck out of here, kick them, take yeah. the gun, take clip, come out. You don't believe none oh, of that shit, right? Yeah, me. Yeah. That's when going to heaven come out. Yeah. Bop. Yeah. Wallow, is that you? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> what happened? What happened, God? He was fucking with a Detroit nigga about that watch. <laughs> what watch? Oh, he took it off. You <laughs> to on, you what dropped. watch? <laughs> oh, fucking wrong yeah. with you? You hear me? But listen, man, go get that album. Come out tomorrow. Babyface Ray. Yeah. Wallow267. Million dollars worth of game. And it's just like that. Right.